Hey everybody, Ron here. I've been trying to record this video for the past few weeks, but I was winging it and just wasn't working. But now I have a plan and this time it will be different. I've finished my first Eberron campaign and I'm in the middle of my second Eberron campaign and it's been a lot of fun. And I figured that since someone had suggested it a while ago, I would make a primer for the setting of my own, but try to keep it brief. To cover how we got the setting in the first place, a guy named Keith Baker won an open setting search that had over 10,000 entries to be a setting for third edition D&D. So what do you need to know about Eberron? It summarizes the setting in the following way. It's a magical world. From Warforged and airships to the mighty dragon marked houses, magic is a part of the world and its stories. Pulp Adventure. Whether you're leaping from an airship or battling demons in forgotten ruins, Eberron encourages cinematic action and swashbuckling adventure. Neo-Noir Intrigue. Eberron is a world of difficult choices. The line between hero and villain is easily blurred, and even the champions of the light may have things they regret. The Last War. Eberron has just emerged from a century-long civil war, and the scars of that bitter conflict remain. How did the war affect your character, and how will it shape your story? The Morning. This mystical cataclysm destroyed an entire nation and created a deadly wasteland in the heart of Corvair. The morning brought the war to an end, but it is a mystery and a threat that looms large over Eberron. Ancient Mysteries Powerful artifacts are hidden in the ruined cities of giants. Dragons and demons scheme in the shadows, unraveling a prophecy that could shape the future. These ancient mysteries can be a source of fantastic adventures and terrible danger. Finally, if it exists in D&D, it has a place in Emberon, but it may not be the place you're used to. So that's a good place to start, but I wanted to add more. Alignment in Emberon is a bit looser. Morality is blurred and not straightjacketed like in standard D&D. You can have a chaotic evil gold dragon and a lawful good red dragon. Basically, if it's a sentient species, don't assume it's going to have the alignment listed in the monster manual. This opens up all kinds of role playing and story opportunities. The races are well represented in D&D, and I'll talk about those later, but first I want to tackle the races unique to Eberron. There are the changelings who are descendants of humans and doppelgangers with some of the latter shape-shifting ability. There are Kalistar who typically but not always are humo humanoid semiotic vessels for dream spirits from another plane. There are shifters who are lycanthropic humanoid hybrids who retain a little of their lycanthropic ancestors ability. And there are Warforged who are living constructs that were bred for war and are now free and that has led to some interesting development. Eberron elves come in multiple flavors. You have the undead ancestor wor worshippers. Don't worry, they make undead for positive energy. You have your warrior conquerors and your cosmopolitan peoples. Dwarves do their thing as in other settings, but they are more about money, business, and power than they are in other settings. And that can lead them to some dark places. Orcs and half-orcs are nature-loving druids and shamans and I love that. Halflings are dinosaur riding nomads, and half elves, well, they're half elves. Gnomes are diplomats, scribes, and the magical Illuminati. The main continent is Corvair, and for the purposes of this video, I won't get into the details of all the nations. Just know that the result of the last war spawned 12 recognized nations, including four of the original pre war five nations, one unofficial nation of monsters, and some territories and a magical wasteland. Speaking of that magical wasteland, the morning happened for some unknown reason four years before the start of the campaign and enveloped the entire nation of Seer, the fifth of the original five nations, leaving thousands of people without a home. No one knows what happened and almost no one wants to repeat it. There are other continents like Zendrick, the Lost World, which was home to a powerful ancient giant empire, and Sarlona, which is dominated by the rule of another faction of psionic dream spirits. Erano, where the undead worshipping elves are, and Argonesson, the dragon continent. Don't go there, it's bad news. Finally, let me cover dragon marked houses. Dragon marks are the magical tattoos which manifest themselves with specific power on specific races. For each mark, there is a house who act as a corporation, basically. They're not supposed to own land and have political power, but recent events have loosened things up a little bit. There are 12 marks and 13 houses. For convenience, 
I will list them on the screen. They're an interesting part of the setting for sure. And that's about it. My goal was to keep this under 10 minutes and it looks like I have. So if you want more info, check down in the description below for some links. Thanks. And as always, until next time, see you later.